This is Twit. Robin R. said, Hi, Steve. With all these buffer overflow and use after free issues, I've seen talk of getting development to switch to Rust. My question to you is what kind of concerns or defensive techniques do you do when developing an assembly? Is it the fact that you are so low level, you are forced to be aware of everything and thus don't fall into the same traps? Additionally, would you change anything with a piece of software that you knew would be always on and be available on the Internet? So and I thought about this for a while. So first of all, I do have a piece of software which is always on and available on the Internet, and that's GRC's server. It is laced with uh, a lot of my project code that, you know, shields up itself. The, probably the most complex asynchronous thing I've written, which is always online, is the DNS, the DNS cacheability or uh, spoofability test. That thing has... Uh, all kinds of asynchronous queries off to individual servers as, as, it, disco as it discovers them. Uh, lots of things happening dynamically. Um, I have the same problems that anybody writing in C would have, which is I, I, uh, to do that, I create a linked list of tasks and each of the objects in the, that are pointed to in the linked list is a structure which I allocate in RAM, which contains the details of where that task is and what's going on. Um, that, those have dynamically created lists of, query, of outstanding queries and their responses. I don't know how many there will be, so, th so that's a list. So it's a, an extremely dynamic construction and it's been running for many many years and it's never had a bug or crashed so i think the advantage i have is i'm first of all one developer so i don't have a problem explaining anything to myself uh and uh it, it while there's a lot going on it's still not nearly as complicated as what has happened to today's browsers which are just like, I don't know if there's any one person whose single mind is able to, accompany, to encompass the entire thing. And the same is certainly true for operating systems. So, so um, I am at a low level. I'm at a, essentially at the level that C operates because all the things I've just described is exactly how I would code something were I coding in C. There's not that big a difference. I so think you, the, the only you do in an assembler, you're doing effectively your own malloc. Uh, you're allocating memory. You have to remember. And I'm, I'm doing reference, and I'm doing my own reference counting. You're, yeah, so like I, so you yeah. got to know when and, you can throw. You do your own garbage collection. In other words, yep. You don't yep. and, and and you don't. You know, the, the off by one problem probably is a little bit less of a problem for you because you're so intimately connected with what's going on. I think some of the problems that come from high level languages is they're so ins the programmers are so insulated from what's going on that they they can make it's easy for them to make a mistake well and and we talked for example about microsoft's decision to use electron uh as their platform for implementing teams the problem is that that's javascript html and css you don't have to be a you know a power coder in order for something to look like it's working in right. javascript and so i think so exactly as you say leo i think that does that does tend to admit less capable or less rigorous programmers. The, the, the lower level the language, the more careful you need to be, or it's very obvious that yeah, you, you know, see I mean, something's going to. Yeah. Yes. And I think yeah. also uh, and Ru the reason they're talking about Rust is Rust is, is it, it is garbage collected, but it's very type. There's very type uh, constrained. You know, it's a static type system, and it really tries very hard to keep you from making mistakes. Every time we see languages like that, like Ada, uh, I think programmers b appreciate it, but also don't like to use it. You know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like nanny languages. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, yeah, uh, yeah I, you know, that's a language, but boy, I don't want to code in that. That's, you know, Rust no is fun. impressive. And I guess, you know, what it's replacing, which is mostly C and uh, to some degree C++, um, is bad enough. So I guess <laughs> people who use Rust like it. 
Uh, and so, I played with it a little bit. It's very impressive, but there's a lot of boilerplate, a lot of extra code. It's like Java a little bit in that respect. That uh, somebody like you, and to some degree me, I don't want to spend all that time typing and all that crap. I just want. And I think what's I think what's going to happen is we'll get to the point where coders will not be given a choice. That is, what what what, what we see happening is that is that we're getting to the point where. We've got all the processing power we need. It used to be, it used to be that we didn't have enough RAM and we didn't have enough speed to support the the um, the overhead. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. The, the, exactly. To, to support the overhead of sophisticated languages that do a lot to protect. Uh, the way they're operating today we do and i think at some point there will be a browser that bites the bullet and says we're coding everything in rust right. because we d we're well, done with use after free errors period <laughs> and we don't care if you don't if you don't like it remember rust was written by mozilla i mean it comes from mozilla there's a reason right it is you right. know very much for that uh, and by the way, once you compile it, Rust is one of the reasons people like Rust is it's a systems level language. It can be as fast as C and C++. So once you compile it, it's very and efficient. Think of the upside, Leo. If you get paid by the line of code. <laughs> uh, Rust is, I'm thrilled that Rust is now in the latest kernel. That is a good thing for everybody yes. who uses Linux. I, I completely agree. Yeah, I think that's yeah. neat. And the issue is really libraries uh, and support. Uh, and a lot of that's being handled now, so that's good. Don't miss All About Android every week. We talk about the latest news, hardware, apps, and now all the developer -y goodness happening in the Android ecosystem. I'm Jason Howell, also joined by Ron Richards, Florence Ion, and our newest co-host on the panel, Wen Tu Dao, who brings her developer chops. Really great stuff. We also invite people from all over the Android ecosystem to talk about this mobile platform we love so much. Join us every Tuesday, All About Android, on twit.tv.